So I didn't do a very good job last time I incubated the clutch of showing you guys what happens when it's ready to hatch. As you can see here, the baby snails are eating their way out of the clutch. And what I do at this point, what I do at this point is just get a simple breeder box, any brand will do. Uh, this one's about <laughs> 12 years old. And we'll go over to the aquarium that they're gonna be raised in and I'll show you what happens next. So the way these breeder boxes work is they just float right on the surface. And one of the reasons that I hatch egg clutches into them is because the babies are really tiny and it makes it super hard to maintain the substrate when you have a couple hundred uh, pinhead sized baby snails. So I just picked up the clutch and all I do is gently rub my fingers back and forth across it to free all the baby snails. And I leave the clutch remnants in the container with them because they'll eat it. You, you don't want to press hard here, but you'll find that when the, the clutch is at this point, it falls apart super easily. Now I'm going to put this container into the tank that I'm going to raise the snails in because what happens with snails is as they grow, uh, every time the water conditions change, they get a groove in their shell and I want these shells to look as nice as possible. So you can see all those little gold specks are baby snails. You can see how teeny tiny they are. So I'm gonna move these into the tank they're gonna be raised in. I just broke them open in this one so that I would be able to get a good camera angle for you guys. So let's do that now. So this is the baby snails in their floating breeder box in the tank they're going to be raised in. You can see how teeny tiny they are. That's my index finger. These babies are very, very small, but they'll grow really quickly with good, clean water. Now feeding baby apple snails is no different than feeding the adults. I'll drop a pellet of some sort into this container each day to feed them. And this really allows me to monitor, you know, how they're doing if they're eating and it makes sure that they don't have to travel great lengths within the aquarium to find the food that they need to grow properly. I can already see little antennas and feet opening for these guys to start climbing around. Now some will climb out of this container but most will stay put and once they get around the diameter of a pea I will move them into the aquarium. Uh, it looks like the vast majority of these are going to be gold snails, which is pretty typical because their parents were both gold, though you do occasionally get some striped or other solid variants. You can usually tell by the time they're three days old if they will be solid or striped and what color they're going to end up being. Let me throw on my macro lens for you guys. So here we can see the babies taking their first steps. If you look really closely, Right here is one that's moving around the container and I just hatched these about 30 seconds ago. They're really, really adorable. Now one of the reasons as well that I hatched them into these containers is that it's not at all uncommon to have some snails that have shell imperfections like holes um, over their organs and those will need to be called. But so far, these guys look great. And again, these things are super teeny. It's my finger next to them, just to give you an idea. And I find that it really makes life a lot easier hatching them and growing them out in these tiny containers. So I'm sorry that with the last snail video, I didn't do a very good job of showing you this part of the process. I hope this makes up for it. You can see them cruising around already. And as I mentioned, they'll eat the remnants of that clutch. Not every single cell in the clutch was viable, but you can see there's quite a few baby snails. Look at this little adventurous guy. This one is definitely the most adventurous. They're so cute though, oh my word. Everybody's starting to move around. 
Now, if I would have left these in the floating container, they would have survived, but they would have hatched onto that damp material, and then I would have had to move them into an aquarium. It's For me, it's simply easier to break open the clutch as soon as I see that they're ready to emerge. And since I could see these little tiny guys, some had eaten through the edge of the shell, it was time. And generally for me, incubating the way that I do, it's about nine days. Up to 14 days is considered normal, especially if you leave them where they lie. Um, I have had issues in the past leaving them on the aquarium edge with them drying out and the snails not being able to eat out of the clutch and then dying inside of it. So it is my preferred method to incubate and then um, manually hatch them into these containers. It looks like everybody is moving around now. So this was a very viable clutch. Thanks as always for your continued support. I hope you guys enjoyed this special bonus video.